Good morning guys, welcome back. Today we are doing the Crypt Carrier by Crosswind Designs. It is a convertible backpack to crossbody bag. Uh, it's really cute, it's got card slots inside and I even did the drop-in lining. So I haven't done a video on that because uh, I was actually scared of it. But turns out, not as hard as you think. I got a few tips and tricks to help you with it. Uh, so stay tuned. Okey dokey, let's do this. So I'm going to start with my strap connectors. What's wrong puppy dogs? Goodness, I don't know. My dogs are nuts. They just run at the door for anything. Puppies! Stop it. Um, right, so I'm putting double-sided tape down the center of my strap connectors. Now, when I cut them, this is actually two and two. And for my top ones, so that it's convertible to a backpack, I'm actually using this, funnily enough. Uh, which may seem weird, but I ordered these and they came as the wrong size. So I've been trying to use them up. So all I do is I take some pliers and I take out the middle piece and then boom, squaring. So this will mean that the um, connectors can fit through there. I've already seen that I have forgotten something for this pattern because apparently that's what I do. So I'm putting double side tape down the center of everything. And I've got my um, stitch length set to four because I want it nice and decorative. Now just for something different, we're actually doing the drop-in lining today, which is not something I normally do, but I was like, you know what, why not? We'll probably end up going over to my other machine for it. Um, which is rattly and noisy, but we'll just have to get through that. I'm on a mission to use that machine more because otherwise it's just a lot of waste of money. I've also finally ordered the motor for it too. I found one um, relatively cheap on eBay. So yay. Don't know how long it'll take though. It's only like two hours drive away, but with Australia Post the way it is, it'll probably take two weeks. All right. So I have folded everything into the center. Now you've got options here. You can stitch down the edges or down the center or not stitch at all. If you're new to the bag making, just don't stitch it. Just chop them in half and off you go. I'm going to stitch down the center because I think it looks pretty. So I'm going to do one eighth of an inch each side of the center line. Now I've done this so often that I can now eyeball it. But on this one I'll show you. Grab a ruler and a Chaco pen. So if you've never watched one of my videos, this is a pen with chalk dust. It's got a little wheel in the end. Don't mind all the um, pen mark on mine. But it's got a little wheel that dispenses the chalk. So all you do is you mark half an inch. You can hear it. The wheel turns and dispenses the chalk. And then, so you've got like a lot of chalk dust. And you can just blow it. And then all the excess chalk dust is off. And then when you finish, you can just rub the line away. Um, so now that I've got my center line, I can do one eighth of an inch each side of it. Which for me and my foot is, I run the toe down the center. So the left hand toe is just going along that line, giving me a gap. Um, the more you do this, the better you get at it. Um, and then the less you will need the line. You can eyeball it. Also, if you folded it perfectly into the center, you can um, sew it from the other way. But I always like my top stitch better than my bottom. So now I'm just gonna rub this on my pants because I'm in my fluffy pants and it should get rid of all the chalk dust. See? Crisis averted. All right, grab some, not those scissors. Grab my a vinyl cutting scissors. And yes, I have different scissors that do different stuff. They're just better at some things than others. Like cutting fabric with these eventually hurts your hand. Uh, but cutting vinyl with the other scissors is not as successful as you'd like. Okay, so I've chopped them in half. 
And so now I've got the right strap connectors. It was just a lot easier to do. So we're going to take this one. And I always put the join where the join is in this. I put that against the join of the vinyl. And then we can just put them shut. Scully can go back to his home. All right. Slide the D rings on. Do the same thing to all of these. I like to do my little pieces first, mainly so I don't forget them, like I did on yesterday's video. So do all four, and then I'm going to sit them in my hardware bowl. So I've decided this is my hardware bowl. Uh, it's a Lord of the Rings bowl. It's actually got like the one ring stuff in the side of it. I like it. I like Lord of the Rings though, so there you go. Okie dokie. Done. In the bowl. Put the bowl aside. The bowl is also missing um, two clips because it's an adjustable bag, so you can either have it as a crossbody or a shoulder bag, and I like that. And so I'd like to do it. If you don't want it as one or the other, you won't need as many strap connectors and then you don't have to use these. So if you're low on hardware, just pick which way you want to do it and then do it, okay? So I'm going to do the strap while I know I've got a full bobbin. Um, and then because I can make the strap and stick it aside. So again, more double-sided tape. I go through so much double-sided tape. I go to the radio shop and usually buy everything on their shelf, uh, which is usually six to eight rolls. And that won't even last me a whole month because I do so much sewing. But at least I can get it. And it lives on my zipper jig, so it's nice and handy. So I'm just folding both sides into the center now, if you've never watched a video, again, I'm just going to say it again. And if you have, I don't know, don't listen. <laughs> um, I used to draw a line down the center and then fold one side and then flip it and do the other. This way is actually quicker, but I find if I draw the line, then this takes me longer. If there's no line, I just assume I know where the center is, and so it works out quicker. So all I do is I pinch it together like this and hover above it where I think is roughly the center and then just push down. Now if you've got um, vinyl that's being extra stubborn and won't stick, I've got this bad boy. This is like a, whoops, I don't have it anymore. It is a vinyl scraper, I guess, um, or like... When you put stickers on windows, you, you run it along there. So you can just score the edge of this to help it stay down more. Uh, another option is you can use like a credit card. Probably not actually your credit card so you don't damage it. Um, but one of those like rewards cards. But this is quite a flexible soft vinyl. So this is Pacifica Standard. There's a couple of websites you can get it off. I will endeavor to get them to you and add it in the description box, actually. And they come in all the glorious colors. And then I can also get, um, they've got Pacifica that's all textured. So I will actually be ordering some of that soon. They've got a really nice basket weave in green. And obviously I love green, so I need it. I don't have a plan for it. I just want to buy it. All right, nearly to the end. Sweet. So I've already ironed the um, sateen. So this, I already know this is going to stretch because it's sateen. Um, but I'm going to try not to overstretch it. All right, so the join right sides up and then this join right sides down so that it's all pretty. And then I'm going to start in the center of the end and I'm going to back stitch first and then forward stitch. That just leaves less bulk in the corner where we're going to end. So, 
if you're new to this, I would um, you can either clip these together where they need to sit, or you can put some double-sided tape. I am not going to do that today, just because I don't need to. I have done this enough. But when I first started doing straps this way, I would definitely stick another piece of double-sided tape in the center to hold it in the center. Um, but practice makes perfect. So while I'm probably not perfect, I at least now don't need the tape, which is a little bit less tape each month I have to buy. If you're using fabric that's shorter than the strap, so I've just done the width of the vinyl, which I think is about 135 centimeters from memory, I think that's how wide it is. Um, if your fabric's not that wide, you can just join two pieces together and then chop off the excess. But save that excess because it works out really well to do a strap on a clutch. So if you're gonna make, if you've got extra fabric, make a clutch as well and then you don't waste that piece. So I'm just going slowly and using my fingers to hold it in the center. There's no hurry. Um, if you stick this down, it will go quicker, but you've still got to have the time to stick it down. So it probably works out about the same time. This way might even be longer, uh, but it's cheaper because you don't use as much tape. Okay, so I'm near the end. I'm going to stop with my needle down and then I'm going to chop half an inch past the end. That bit can go in the bin. It's too small for me to do anything with. And then I'm just going to tuck under the raw edge so that we're not going to see it and it's not going to fray. It's more about the fraying and the seeing, to be honest. And then needle down and I'm going to pivot the other way. Stitch down, flick this back, make sure that's tucked under, and then stitch down the other side. Now the second side always goes quicker because it's being placed where you want it to be. I just need to make sure that this particular fabric doesn't stretch because it is a stretchy fabric. I love sateen. Most of my wardrobe is made up of sateen dresses. I was going to wear one of my skull dresses today, but it's too cold. Sorry. You just get the bite me shirt again. Alright, so I'm just tucking this side under as I go. I did iron it, but apparently not long enough because it's not staying tucked under. Which is not the end of the world. And when you get to the end, back stitch two stitches and then trim off your tails. Trim your tails. I'm totally getting stickers made that say trim your tails. Because <laughs> I am ridiculous. Okie dokie. So, strap adjuster. We're going to do all of this now and then we can put the strap aside. So you go up around the middle um, bar. Yours may move or it may be solid, doesn't matter. Um, I actually stock both, depending on what I can find at the time. And then I'm just going to stitch across here. So I'm actually going to do like a, an Xbox. <laughs> Xbox. We're not actually making the game, so don't stress. All right, that can go over there. So I'm going to start closest to my strap, uh, like my metal so that I know where to go to without stitching over it. And then I'm going to go around this way, because it's easier, and then go diagonally down to the other side. Needle down, across, needle down, and up. Like so. And then trim your tails. So that is now, you can't see my stitching because it's black on black, but that's now on. So I'm going to put it uh, pretty side down. 
grab my bowl, slide one of my swivel clips on so that the back, uh, so the flat bit is touching the vinyl. Then I'm going to go up and then down through my strap adjuster so that will now be adjustable. And then again, flat side on the vinyl, fold it over, and I'm going to do the Xbox again. So I'm going to start at the top with my foot against the hardware. So it will be snug, but not ridiculously hard to sew. And then down diagonally, across the bottom, and back up. If you wanted to, you could have done rivets instead. Rivets are fun, they're pretty. Uh, but now everybody has a rivet machine, which I understand. Sewing's expensive. Okay, strap is done, looks fabulous. It's got a little bit of accent of the vinyl on the front. Chuck it aside. Okay. We are going to do, where's my pieces? Oh no, don't tell me I left them behind. Or did they just fall? Actually, while we're here, pick which one is your front and your back. So this is my front because I centered the skull. I actually put the skull exactly where the applique skull goes, just because I thought I was funny. Um, and they say to find the center, so I'm just going to fold this in half. And then clip the center up here. Now I don't use snips to clip it because I've cut myself too many times on video and all. Now this one is where you want your big one because what's going to happen is we're going to feed that strap through here to make it a backpack. So that's why I've used the bigger square ring because that's now easy to do. You can get them through smaller rings, but it's much more difficult and potentially unnecessary. So I'm just going to clip that to the back piece like this. And then on the pattern, it actually has the side um, placement pieces. And I'm going to place those on with two clips. Uh, one clip just doesn't hold it well enough, in my opinion. So I like to do two clips because then it can't twist and fall out of the seam you're trying to stitch. Okay, that doesn't go in there, that goes in that one. So I'm also going to base these on now that I've held them there so that again they don't move while I'm trying to do the final seam. So I'm going to back stitch, stitch over it and I'm just doing a quarter of an inch from the edge because that will be within my seam allowance so I won't see this stitch but now I don't need clips and I know it's not going to fall out while I'm trying to sew. So again, stitch and then trim your tails. Do you know I don't even mean to say that, it's just now a thing. Back stitch, over, back stitch. Okay, so the back's now got all its placement. Pop that one aside. If you're going to do the applique design that comes with the bag, do that now. Um, and now we're going to do the zipper. So I just need to go and find where I have put these pieces. Actually, I know where I put them. I put them here. They were in the heat press being squished together. See, we're all good. Now, I would like to use, I think, black zipper tape for this. I try to use less black and more colours, but it's either black or white with this because I didn't do a coloured vinyl. Because the pattern... Oh my god, where's the end? Hold on. There we go. So I don't cut mine, I just keep it as a big long piece over there. So I need some zipper tape that is exactly that long. 
Uh, the pattern tells you how much you need, but I just measure it because that's who I am. Okay, so because we're doing the drop in lining, we put this right sides down and we don't add our other piece. And then I'm just going to stitch that on. So I'm on a normal stitch length. Um, so my joining stitch length. Now there shouldn't be any foam in this seam. And then, you know what, we're going to, no, we can't chain stitch, it's attached. And so then we fold that under and we're going to top stitch along there as well. So you really want to concentrate on this top stitch because when we put in the drop in lining, we're going to do a stitch line next to this. Uh, so this one I'm going to do a full quarter inch away. And so when I put my lining in, I'm going to do one eighth of an inch. So the, the second lot of stitch lines later will be closer to the zipper. You also want to make sure that this is tucked under so that the excess is tucked towards where I'm stitching and then back stitch at the end always and then trim your tails and preferably put them in the bin just so you don't have to come back and clean up later now my pattern is directional, so I want to think about how I want to put this on. So I want them both facing the same way because that's how I like to do it. So therefore that's going to go on there like that. And I'm going to start from the same end. And I'm going to run my zipper up against my foot. And then just stitch that on. It's been a while since I've done a drop in lining. Oh, something's stuck. What's going on with my bobbin? That's a bobbin noise. Because everything else I can see. Oh, maybe it's not. Oh, no, it's a here problem. We've got a big loop. There we go. I'm getting towards the end of my black thread um, on this particular spool, so it's misbehaving a little bit. Very inconsiderate of it, in my opinion. All right, so now because I've stitched this way, I can actually just fold this over and go again. So again, I want to do a quarter of an inch. I am going to back stitch. Slow and steady wins the race if you're new to top stitching. Everybody starts off bad, but the only way to get better is to try. So definitely try it. It also helps it to sit nicer. Okay, I'm going to trim off that extra tiny little bit of zip because I didn't need it. And then right now is when I put my zipper pulls on. I am going to use two because I want to. I also grabbed one too many of those. So to put your zipper on, you split your zipper a little bit and then stick it halfway in and then join in the other side and then you look from the top and you can see them line up and then you just push. And that didn't quite work. I am one tooth out. Or you can use a zipper jig, which is definitely quicker. I'm going to use a zipper jig. I'll even bring it over so you can see. So I've done a video on my zipper jig. Um, I like to put my zipper right sides up, but some people do it the other way and there's no right or wrong answer to that. You do it however you like. So I just pop it in, split it, and then feed both sides in equally. Sometimes. Sometimes it likes to misbehave. I actually usually stand over it. No, you don't want to go on. Of course you don't. I'm doing a video. 
Do you know I never have this problem off camera? It's like one of those things. Okay, fine. We'll do it manually. It's this side that's been misbehaving. Maybe I'll just trim off a tooth or two. Also, give it a bit of a melt if you're using zipper tape by the meter. Preferably don't set it on fire like I just did. Okay, maybe it's the zipper. It could be. This is why I now buy nicer zippers. Um, the more expensive ones don't have these kinds of issues where they don't want to thread through. Okay, so that technically went on and then it didn't seal for whatever reason. Okay, so these are even. If you've got a bump sticking out of one side, uh, take your zipper off because it means it's, Ill, it's not aligned properly. And then just do it again. Alrighty, strap connector over your zipper, like so. I'm going to use, again, two clips to hold it down, like that, and like this. One and two. And then I'm going to grab my gusset piece which is the bottom half so i chose to do the fabric and the vinyl just because i wanted to show off a little bit more of the fabric because i really like it all right back stitch i can get rid of the bowl that's all the hardware we need today and when you get to here just go slowly because it is thicker and you don't want to snap a needle because i've been there done that if you get a little bit um, driving happy, you can snap needles. And then check it, make sure it's all glorious. And then I'm going to top stitch along here with a more decorative stitch length. So I'm going to go back up to four. There's no right or wrong stitch length. It's whatever you like to use. I usually use about three and three quarters. But that's a mouthful to keep saying. So I've switched to four. off the tails and then we're going to join the other side so we're going to come over here back to adjoining stitch length over the zip and the strap connector like so check it trim your tails looking good so then I'm going to top stitch so this just keeps the um, sides sitting down nicely you don't have to do it but I do recommend it because it's pretty and it's good practice and then back stitch trim your tails Oop. Put some double-sided tape here to help hold my vinyl down because this one's not adhesive they sent me um a roll and a chunk of it had no glue so rather than wasting it i just stick it on cool so there we go there's that bit so now you want to fold this in half and you want to find your top center grab your center snipping clips you can also get um a notcher it's like a, I don't know, I saw it, it come up on a Facebook ad. But it's a notcher where you just stick it on the edge of the fabric and it'll cut this for you. And um, my concern with that is what if it cuts it too thick? So I don't own one. I can just do that. It's just as easy. On thinner stuff, you could probably just use a hole punch, to be totally honest. 
All right, so then again, we need to find our center points. So you want to do top and bottom. And then these are just going to line up with what we just did. So I'm going to zip it open. It's always a good idea to zip it open now so you don't forget. And then I'm going to take my clips and I'm going to clip the top two notches together. I also want to think about which way, oh no, I've put two zips. So two zips doesn't matter. If you've only put one zipper pull on, think about which way you want that to open because that is important. And so then I'm going to put three clips at the top and then I'm going to come to the bottom and I'm going to line the bottom up. Like so. I don't need that many clips. I don't know why I'm clipping. I just like to. So, the pattern says to start half an inch from the edge, uh, which theoretically is where your foam is sitting, if you've cut it correctly. We're going back to adjoining stitch length, and we're going to make sure I have enough tail that my thread doesn't come out. I've been pretty good at this lately. It's usually only one a video now, so that's good. Back stitch, stitch along, and back stitch. So now that's your bottom. So we're going to take our vinyl cutting scissors. These, by the way, are class A knife edge, and no, they don't pay me to say that. Nobody pays me to say anything. Right. Clipped. So now we're going to fit the rest of this around the edge. I want my clips to face the gusset, as that is most likely the way I'm going to be stitching this. So I'm going to do the whole outside, and then we're going to do the inside. And then we're probably going to go to the other machine to put the drop-in lining in. Whoa! Whoopsies. Although I suppose I can try it here. I can do it, it's just easier on the other machine, but obviously you guys don't all have the other machine. Maybe I'll wait till the engine's here and then I'll make another one of these all on the other machine. The main reason I got the cylinder arm is for things like drop-in linings and top stitching. And I keep throwing clips on the floor. Just ignore that. So if all your seams are correct, this fits beautifully, by the way. It's okay to have a little bit of bubbling outside of your seam allowance because it is a curve, so these things are bound to happen. But the more clips you put in, the less noticeable it is. And you just maneuver it until it sits where you want and then clip it down. So another thing you probably didn't know, these clip half an inch, which is kind of very handy for what we do. Oh, and they're playing with the bombs again, or the gums, or whatever that is. Okay, so now we've got it clipped like that. So if you're using all vinyl, you don't need to interface your vinyl with any interfacing, just the foam. Um, but because I'm using the sateen, I actually interfaced the fabric parts with uh, an extra heavy non-woven iron-on. Because I want my bag to sit up by itself and be glorious. Hello, cowboy. What's wrong, puppy? Dog outside? Okay, my dog wants to go outside. Dogs are so clever. They stand in my line of sight um, and perk their ears and stare at me until I say outside, and if that's what they want, they run to the door. 
I didn't mean to train him to do that, it just happened. Alright, back stitch at the end, pull it out. If you've got some zigzag scissors, or you may also know them as pinking shears, trim off your excess. Uh, if you don't have pinking shears, you can just use normal scissors. Um, this just gives more flexibility in curves. So I'm trimming it down. I'm just trimming off like half to three quarters. I don't want to get too close to the stitches so they don't break because that's obviously not what we want. Um, and then put the mess in the bin. I'm going to do the border dimension as well. This is also going to help the lining sit in nicer because it won't be trying to fight this in the corner. So it'll sit nice and flat. Cool. I probably also should have said, before you go clipping that, check to make sure it's looking nice. Uh, mine is, but... Just check that. Alrighty. So again... Center, center, clip, clip. And then we're going to come down to the bottom. And I haven't found the center of the bottom yet, so I'm going to fold that over. And just snip off that little bit there. The second side is always more difficult uh, because you're fighting the other side as you squish the bag down. So I always use more clips on the second side than the first side because I know it's going to give me more drama. Right. So again, half an inch, stitch, back stitch, and off we go. Back stitch. Pull it out, trim your tails. If you do them as you go, they're just easier to manage. Sometimes I miss a couple, but for the most part, we get there. Right, then just clip up to, but not over the stitches. You don't want to cut your bag open, that would suck. And then I'm going to start in the corner and then start clipping with the clips facing towards the gusset. Lots and lots of clips, again, because we're going to fight the whole bag now. Other side. I kind of work from up and down. There's no, there's no right or wrong way. It's just lots of clips is the official answer. that doing stop it I've got like a little bubble here I'm just gonna pull it out so it doesn't stitch as a bubble because that's obviously not what I want there we go that's better it should stand up by itself right now too by the way if everything's gone to plan so Squish all the bag down out of the way. So you kind of want to push it over on an angle 
so that you can get to where you want to stitch. Back stitch. Go slowly there because there's a connector, so you don't want to snap a needle. Again, it's not ideal, people. All right, stitch around. Just to show you, you can do it with normal scissors. Just just do it slowly so you don't actually accidentally cut the wrong thing because that would suck. You don't want to wreck your bag after all this beautiful work. So theoretically, you should be able to turn this in the right way and it's all glorious. So I'm going to grab the bottom and just kind of pull it through. Yes. Push out your corners. Oh my god, look at it. It is so cute. Sorry, I'm really excited. I don't know why. So it makes me happy, I guess. Alright. Look at that. So I'm very happy that I've put um, the interfacing on this fabric. Otherwise, I think this would be too soft. But as it is at the moment, it's awesome. So let's make the lining. What have we got going on? We've got... I didn't cut a front and a back. Okay, so this is where my brain's at. I've cut all the gusset and all the card slots. I forgot to iron, so I'm going to have to do that in a second. I've cut the pattern, uh, the pocket pieces and forgot to cut a front and a back. So, I'm going to go iron the card slots and cut a front and a back. This again. I now have my front and back piece. And I've now ironed my card slots. So I'm going to fold down the top piece that's out of the way. And I'm just going to top stitch along here. Now I am going to back stitch. Like that. Trim your tails and go to the next one. Now on this fabric, uh, this is the waterproof canvas, so I didn't need to interface it. Um, that's not why I chose it, I just really wanted a bright red on the inside of this bag. Okay, so now that we've done those two, it says to just uh, stitch it together at the side within the seam allowance so that they don't move. So I always go bottom to top with this, um, or they tend to misbehave. So you don't have to go the whole way, you just go where the card slot bits are, like so. And then we're going to trim this piece down after we trim our tails off so they're not in my way. So the idea is, is that half of this is going to be card slots and the other half is just going to be some fabric, which is why we have the second piece. For those that looked at it and went, oh, what the hell are we doing? So, what I want to do is make sure I've got this the right way. So, I want to join this one to here. So, I'm lining it up on that line. And then I'm going to cut this to be that shape. So, I need a pen. To mark it, blue doesn't work. I always forget that. So we line the pocket up with the, the dotted line. 
just if I wasn't clear, I'm coming back to do it again for you, like that, and then just trace around the shape. Oops. Ah! Preferably without scribbling all over your pattern. Cool! So then we can put these right sides together. I'm going to trim all this off later, so don't be too stressed about that. Um, what's the seam allowance? Let me think. Half inch. Back stitch. Stitch along. Uh, you can even flip this over and top stitch, but you want to top stitch on the side that doesn't have the card slots, otherwise you'll make your card slots too small. Which is not ideal. I like that. Ooh, I ran out of bobbin thread. That's unfortunate timing on my behalf. I'm actually also nearly going to run out of top thread. So I'm going to wind my bobbin with my new spool. My machine has two holders for threads so that you can be winding one while you're stitching. Just clever, but I very rarely use it. However, what we're going to today. Oh, uh, come on. There we go. All right, lift that up. Now, when doing a bobbin wind, if you're on an industrial machine, this is very relevant to you. I have a little cool plunger that was for my child's medicine, but obviously we don't need it anymore. It's like baby medicine. So I'm just going to take the tiniest amount of oil out of my well that it sits in, and I'm going to squirt it into the bobbin area. So there's like, it's hard to describe, but there's like a sticking out bit. I just squirt it directly under there. And I'm talking like one, not even one mil, just like, like a drop, like a big drop. Um, and then listen to this. Can you hear how that's quieter? And you should also wind your bobbins at full speed because it helps to push the oil up through here. I was taught that by the guy that services my machine, so I feel like it's pretty correct and true. It's not me just making it up. Now, before I go and put my bobbin and my everything back in, I'm just going to take that rubbish piece that I had earlier, and I'm going to stitch nothing, and this will pick up any excess oil in the machine. In case you got a bit oil happy, this will just soak it up. Um, I don't think I've really got much. I used to get lots because I used to put too much in. Um, so it is advised that you do this every time you wind a bobbin, and that way it's a longer time between services. So he said if you do that, you should only need to service your machine every like two or three years. Which is awesome because I no longer live near there and there's nowhere around here to get it serviced. So I stick to that pretty well. I definitely do it off camera. Sometimes I don't do it on camera for you guys. Uh, which is naughty of me, and I should know better. All right. Pull that out just a little bit more. Now I'm going to have to pick up where I left off because I can't just have half of it top stitched. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to manually crank one and then go back through that original hole, and that's going to lock them in, and I'm going over back over a few of the stitches. And then when I get past my line that I've drawn... I can just chop it. Now I'm also going to stitch this line. It doesn't matter that far down, but just to hold the card slots in place. Then I can grab some scissors and just trim that down. I'm just trimming right next to those stitches so that it holds, otherwise what was the point? And 
then we take our lining backing piece and we're going to top stitch along the top well not top stitch join it I guess is a better word and we're using a half inch seam allowance I think I'm going to so let's hope it's right excellent trim off those tails that are floating around there Okay, fold it up and over, finger press it, and then pinch, and then I'm going to top stitch. Like so. And then we're going to take one of these and line it up. So. I am going to trim off this excess here. I think I did a wrong seam allowance, but that doesn't matter. Or I cut it wrong. Could be a whole multitude of things. So I'm just going to line this up until it fits and then tack it down. So this joining stitch looks like it was supposed to be a quarter inch, not half an inch. That's my bad for not uh, reading the pattern properly before I started. So all this means is it's going to have just a slightly smaller, like shorter pocket. Still works, still good. Look, crisis averted. See, everything can be fixed, guys. Done them. All right. Gusset. Let's do this. I need a ruler and a pen and I'm going to measure half an inch. On both of these. And that's the bit we're going to tuck under. So you could iron this down. Or you can just finger press this because it is waterproof canvas and it's okay with that. And then you can just come along and like really score the edge. Even without fake nails, that works pretty well. I promise I do it all the time. So I'm just facing it to me so I can see that fold, but also because I scored it with the um, pen, it does actually fold there for me. It's like I've pre, it's like when you buy perforated paper that tears, same principle. Because I scored it with the pen, it folds at the pen line. Beautiful. So we're going to take our outside piece. And on the outside edge, we're going to put the non-folded edge, like this. And then we're going to take the other one and flip it around and do the same thing. So if you've got um, a print on your uh, lining, just think about how you want it to sit and look. Boom. Look at that. So that looks a little bit wide for my bag, actually. Ah. Better there, better there. I'm going to just slip mine in a little bit. I don't think that that's going to fit my bag, although I did do exactly the same thing. So the idea is... This gap should be from here to here when it's closed, which for me, I'm going to measure it to make sure that my drop-in lining is going to work. 
Okay, so mine's just a little bit wide. Uh, that's an easy fix. I am just going to move them together until the gap is correct, which now it is. Um, this could be different because everybody's got different thicknesses in your zipper tape. So depending on how that worked out for you. And when I built my gusset, it was a little bit excessy on the side. So I'm just going to trim that off. It's actually okay if your lining is a little bit smaller because you want it to sit in there snugly. So the fact that I'm tripping this off actually probably doesn't matter. Uh, quite often when I sew bags, like big bags with big linings, you don't want them to be droopy. So if you do a bigger seam allowance on the lining than the outside of the bag, it sits nicer. Okay. Stitch across here in adjoining stitch length. And then I'm just gonna stop there. I don't need to stitch across the nothing, so I'm going to skip doing that. Trim off your tails so that they don't get in the way. Oop, I missed one. And then fold that down like that and then I'm going to top stitch I don't remember if the pattern says the top stitch or not but I'm going to do it because I want to it's going to hold everything down it'll look nice and so now that is what you will see on the inside of the bag it kind of looks like the start of a H so now I'm going to do the same to the other end So to make this work the best, take a ruler and measure the gap because if you're using different feet and stuff, you will get a different gap. So it is important to make sure that the gap's the same or when you do your drop-in lining, it's not going to fit. And trust me when I say you want it to or you'll be devastated. So again, I'm going to take some clips and clip it together like this. And then a stitch with the correct seam allowance so it's going to fit well. And the reason we don't stitch across here is you will see those stitches when we fold it over and it'll be like a weird stitch line. We don't want that. And I mean, you could veer off, but what's the point? Take the extra time, make it glorious. Okay, so now you've got your gusset piece again. And then we just do the same as we did before. So we're going to fold it at the seams. Oh my God, stop it. I'm going to double-sided tape this down because it's being rude. I'm not going to do it the whole way, just in the middle so it stops floating around. It's trying to fight me. I don't like it when things try and fight me. So... I'll stitch it, stick it down. Boom. Now it'll stay put. Yes. Excellent. So I haven't stuck it the whole way. That doesn't matter. It now stays where I want it to. So now when I do this, it will actually let me fold it. So what we're going to do is we're going to join the side seams and then come up and using not my snips because I cut myself, snip there and then do the same to the bottom so we can line the bottom up as well and then over to the other side and snip. So you're just cutting like the smallest little triangle off because you've got to remember it's going to be double that size when you open it out. So it's like the tiniest snip, but I still get a decent mark. Like it's big enough to see, even though it was tiny. Okay, move 
move all of that out of my way. So I'm going to start with the easy piece, which is the one without anything on it. You could also put a zipper pocket on this panel if you wanted to. Um, the pattern didn't have one. So I'm, I'm trying to stick to patterns the way they're written. I just get a little bit excited. I do like that it's got card slots though, that's super handy. Fold and snip. And do the same to the top. So we want all centers on all pieces, which you could definitely do at the start when you're cutting them all out. And don't do what I do and just forget a piece. Okay, so the bottom, we're going to do the bottom again. So I'm going to line up that center with right sides together and I'm going to I'm going to use less clips cuz it's the lining and it's easier. So back stitch. Stop half an inch before the end. Pull it out. Trim your tails. Take some scissors, snip it up to, but not over, the stitches. And then, start at the top, clip, facing the gusset. That's where we like our stuff. And then I'm going to come down to the bottom here, because see how it's now more flexible in the corner? So I can get it to sit nice and flat. I also want to make sure that these bits are going to be pinned towards the bottom. You want them facing the bottom, it makes the bag flatter. Also we don't want to see them. If you had that sitting up, it kind of defeats the purpose of... Oh, I forgot to do a top stitch there. Remember my top stitch I did on the other side? We probably want it symmetrical, so I should probably do that. But at least I notice now so I don't have to unpull the whole bag. That's good. If I had more time, I'd make a bag before I make a video. Um, but sometimes it's fun kind of learning on the job. To the side clipping. So one bad thing about waterproof canvas, it is not at all forgiving. So there's no stretch going on. So if you've got it all whoop de woo, you're gonna have to work harder to get it all into the seams. Really pay attention to your seam allowances. The people that make the patterns think this out. Especially when it comes to curves. A lot of maths involved in curves. I know my pattern that's coming with a curve. I had to draw it a second time because I mismathed it. Don't know how. I thought I was good at maths until I started to do these. Then apparently not so much. Okay, so that's a lot of clips, uh, but that's because this stuff's slippery and I don't want it to slip while I'm trying to sew it. So now we're gonna come along and stitch. Tidy out your clips as you go so that they're not in the way. So 
this little text mark on my plate, which you may or may not be able to see, is actually marked at half inch from yesterday's video. Although it's starting to rub off. Okay, so check on the inside. Don't worry about how dodgy it looks on the outside. So long as the inside looks nice, we're fine. Then we're going to take our scissors and then trim off the unnecessary excess because again this is going to help the bag sit in there nicely you want to trim off the bottom one as well it just means there's less bulk where the seams touch Okay, last side. Um, we don't need to unzip our zipper because it doesn't have one. <laughs> I know that's ridiculous to laugh at. Leave me alone. All right, and then we're going to stick this in the bag. It's going to be fun. I'm thinking inside out, personally. Alright, along the bottom, same as the other side. Probably don't hold your scissors like this, it's not ideal. But it's lining and it's super thin lining, so it's fine. Okay, clips facing the gusset and off we go. And you can switch down to the bottom and work your way up. So, with this excess, hold it like a 3D object. I haven't said that yet today. It's definitely going to help. So what I do is I use my thumbs to push on the edge so it's gonna because this is how it's gonna sit because it's a curve and that will help you attach the clips and that will disperse all the excess that comes out past the seam allowance for you and makes it way easy to clip you gotta hold it like a 3d object i promise it's gonna help so again you can Stick your thumbs and then bend it and then clip it. You can just work your whole way around doing that, around the curve. I like to work from both ways. It's just my thing. It's my process. All right. Bend it. Clip it. I spoke to my bowl guy this morning. Um, he's under green. Green's the next color coming, by the way. Nice. Okay. Over there we go. Now, I just got to there and it was going to flick up. We want to make sure that this excess points towards the bottom of the bag. Clean up your clips as you go so you've got a workable space. Backstitch, trim your tails, pack up your clips, whoops, throwing them away. And then we're going to again cut off this excess. So I'm only cutting about 50% away. I don't want to get really close to the stitches. 
because that gives it the opportunity to fray and come undone and just not last as long. Um, again, or you could use your pinking shears or zigzag scissors. As they stop fraying. Okay. The zipper open. Turn this. No, it stays that way. And then we're just going to slot it in. So I want my card slots on the back wall. So that's how I'm going to shove that in there. And I'm thinking that double sided tape is going to be my friend for this. So I might actually put some of that on. I'm going to use my really thin stuff. So this is like three mil thick. Um, I got this from the reject shop and I'm just going to put it on the fold, which by the way, this again, probably would have been easier when it wasn't attached to the bag, but I'm not putting it too close to this edge because that's the edge we're going to see. So I'm putting it closer to the back edge where we folded it. Uh, this is going to tack it to the inside of the bag while we then stitch it because we want as many helps as possible. Drop-in linings aren't usually my friend, although I'm feeling pretty confident about this. I've never tried it with double-sided tape before. Please know I am just making this up, so this might be a total disaster. I don't know yet. All right. Again, back of the bag where you want it. And then I'm just going to do one side at a time. So I'm going to peel off this side of the double sided tape. And then place it. So I'm going to start at this edge here. Because we need to make sure that it covers the end of the zip. And you want it to be in line with the top stitching. So just while I'm fiddling with it, I'm also going to clip it. So I'm holding it, sorry, you probably can't see. I'm holding it just past the zippable area and then I'm gonna clip it. And I'm gonna do that the whole way along this side. So you want it to come just past the other stitches to make sure that we're going to get it when we do our next lot of stitches. Then I'm going to come to the other end because it should all fit. I'm just going to glue it down with the double sided tape and make sure everything's sitting where I want it. And your clip should fit between the tape and the edge. Like so. And that is now one side clipped down. So I'm going to push it out like this because I've clipped it where I want. And I'm going to stitch one side at a time. So I want to try and get up here. It's always the ends that I personally have issues with. So I'm just going to smoosh the bag. Or maybe I'll turn the bag inside out altogether. Maybe that'll help me. I'm just thinking about the best way to get into the corners. And I'm thinking the official answer is stitch it inside out like this. Don't push the bag all the way through because um, we don't care about that. We just want to be able to get into here. So if I take off this first clip and assume that my double sided tape is going to hold it, I can now smush this down and get all the way back to the start. 
Oh, look at that. Now we are stitching one eighth of an inch from the edge of the fabric. So let's do this. Just want to make sure that's going to catch. Now I'm just bringing it around slowly and I'm not taking my clips off until I absolutely have to. So again, we want to bring the bag around. And also make sure your zipper pulls out of the way. We do not want to get that either. Okay, let's see how I did. Oh, look at that, guys. We caught it. I'm quite excited about that. Okay, other side. So again, pull off the double-sided tape and stick it to where it needs to be and then also add a clip because it's a good way of holding it while we're maneuvering it. That worked out really well. I'm quite impressed. The one time I tried to do this, I sucked at it so bad, I gave up. This is going quite well. I highly suggest you try it. With clips and double-sided tape, it's not as bad as you'd think. And the inside out ideas definitely helped my cause. Clip it down that end. bit of adjustment there but that's all right whoops okay let's do this so again I want this out of my way so I'm going to fold it over on itself so it doesn't get in my way I want to make sure that the zip is in the opposite direction to where I'm trying to sew so that I don't accidentally catch it while I'm not paying attention to it and then I need to take off one clip to slide it in there. And then I'm pulling it back to get to the start. And I'm manually cranking the start bit so that I can get into where I want. And then off we go. Bring the bag around. Move the zipper out of the way. And then back stick. Trim your tails. I forgot one from the last side. And then push your bag back through. Oh, see? Tails.
push out the corners, flip that over. Look at that, guys. That is awesome. You can grab your, these bits and zip her up. And then you can just attach your strap however you want. So you can either have it here and here as a crossbody, or we thread one side up through here. See, and it's big enough to get the clip through. So depending on how big you need it. And then clip it to the back. I like it guys I really like it try the drop-in lining it's not as scary as I thought and I managed to do it in this machine I didn't even need my other one um, all right guys till next week bye